is needed for your new puppy. Hi, I'm Artie from nonshedpuppies.com. I'm a Minnesota breeder of Brichons, Shih Tzus, and Poodles, Toy, Tiny, and Teacup. Here are a few items I recommend to have when purchasing a puppy. A kennel. I like a wire kennel since it harbors less bacteria and it's easy to attach wheels. A grate. This is used as a backup plan to going outside. The waste does not stick to your puppy's paws and your house stays cleaner. A food dish. I like ceramic since it's hard to tip and doesn't melt on the dishwasher or hold bacteria. A water dish. Ceramic is fine, but I also like a 4 to inch bird stainless steel water bowl. It does not sit on the grate and the water spills less. With the great crate method, a one foot square underneath the mat of the food bowl is necessary. The puppy doesn't eat neatly out of the bowl. It usually takes two three pieces of food and sets it on the mat to eat. If the mat isn't there, the food falls through and it won't be able to eat. You can use a dry deck, a rubber mat for the bottom of a sink, a rear car mat. With the great crate method, it's handy to have a brush to clean the grate. All the toys should start out as supervised toys to be sure they are chew proof. I have found that most rubber toys, tennis balls, rope toys, and larger rawhide to be toys the puppy can have in its kennel. Rawhide is the most favorite item to chew while teething. If your puppy can chew it down in less than a week, you need to go to the next biggest size. Stuffed toys and toys with squeakers are toys the puppy can only play with when you are playing with the puppy. Make your life easier and buy toys that can go through your washer dryer or dishwasher. I wash all toys and beddings every two weeks. This stops any creatures from hatching and causing problems. Keep in mind the size of the dog and the size of the toy. If your puppy can swallow it whole, it's too small. If the toy becomes damaged, fix it or replace it. An old sock, old shoe, old Barbie dolls are great training tools. While you're playing with your puppy, have a few of the items out it's not allowed to have. When the puppy picks it up, say no and give the puppy what it can have. Soon it'll leave your stuff alone. My ebook has more techniques on this kind of training. After the puppy learns the word no, I like to use a spray bottle filled with water. It's not set on mist, it's on straight stream. If the puppy listens to the first no and tries to do the same no again within five minutes or less, I use a spray bottle, four or five blasts right between the eyes, basically the forehead, while you're saying no each spray. Soon you just have to show the spray bottle and you'll have your puppy's cooperation. A harness for training is better than a collar since you can hurt their larynx. I like it to be adjustable. A cloth leash. Put it on the harness each time the puppy comes out of its kennel. Attach the cloth leash. Let it drag behind the puppy. Now if your puppy has its nose down, maybe looking for a spot to go, you step on the leash and there's no chasing your puppy. When you call your puppy, only give it one chance to come. If it doesn't, step on the leash, pull the puppy to you while you're calling its name, once the puppy comes to you 12 times in a row, it thinks you have magic and it has to come. I do not put my address on the name tag. If I'm at the cabin, my puppy won't be brought back to the cities. Put your cell number on the name tag. If your puppy gets lost, you can be out looking for your puppy instead of sitting by your landline. A minute timer helps to keep track of how much time it's been since our last go potty. A wire brush to keep the hair looking great. Use a small amount of canned food or dried protein treats for training. Read the ingredients. This treat is like us eating potato chips. Junk. My ebook goes into great detail about what ingredients to avoid. Use steam distilled or reverse osmosis for the puppy's drinking water. The puppy will be healthier and you'll have less vet bells. Kefir is a great food to add to their diet. It's 150 times stronger than yogurt. It builds the immune system, which again helps and means a healthier puppy. With the great crate method, you'll know by smells and sight if your puppy is having any health issues. For example, if you smell ammonia, it could be the start of a bladder infection. You could open up a capsule of cranberry concentrate, put it in canned food, and feed it to your puppy. Bam! The next day it's gone. Now you'll need to look into the reasons why it happened. My ebook helps you discover possible solutions. A plastic oral syringe to give medication if necessary. A hand towel for a bed. You may have a dog bed, but make it a supervised item so you can teach the puppy not to chew it. Once the puppy knows what it can and can't do, you can use the nicer bed. You may wash the puppy as often as you like if you use Dove or Ivory Bar Soap. Use a cream rinse conditioner to finish the job. What's wonderful about the great crate method is if you miss the puppy's signal to go outside, it chooses to use the grate as a backup plan. You will not find presents behind the couch or under the chair. 
A service bell or a call bell is a great tool for your puppy to tell you it needs to go outside. It's a pleasant sound, loud enough to hear, cheap, and portable. Simply put it by the door the puppy uses to go outside. Take the puppy's front paw and push it on the bell. Open the door and take your puppy outside. Now you won't have staring at the door, barking or scratching. Hope you enjoyed the video.